um, the rest of, uh, for the rest of you though, however, uh, you have been trying to fend off trogs as they, each one of you, uh, they each, they want to either touch one of you, ask you a question, or they're just making nonsensical, uh, assumptions, uh, such as like, you know, um, you know, the angels, they're, they are here, they live in places high in the sky, and, and sometimes, sometimes that's where the rain comes from, because see, see, they're, they cry, and that's where rain, I don't think that's where rain comes from, and just like various different things about each of you, which you can either choose to encourage or dismiss. Yeah, curiosity will chime in. Actually, we live underground. We do not live in the sky. To which both trogs that are talking look at you like you're crazy. You have wings. You live in the sky. You, you don't live... Uh, no, trog live underground. You don't live underground. Big folk don't live under there. <laughs> That's why we glow in the dark, so we can navigate underground. Although I have lived in a flying city for a little bit. They both look at each other and look back at you. What is glow? You know how fire gives off light? That is what glowing is. What is light? Do you know what fire is? You see some eyes twitching. <laughs> Um. I just, I, I uh, flare up my wings to like make a shadow around myself and then I just like make my hand glow as brightly as possible. They watch your wings and then they look confused. I think this one's head is broken. Maybe he did live on the ground. <laughs> no, can't be broken. He helped with yellow squishy. But look at he tried to fly but can't. He talk about life and death. I can fly. And I, I indignantly start to fly to prove that I can fly. Some of them look very impressed. Those two, however, still say. Nah, his head just broken. <laughs> uh, as you're flying, however, uh, that is when the mayor approaches. Uh, and you see uh, her, the small, the, the Familiar small frame with white hair, the long Azamar ears, and the small uh, red rose tucked into her hair. And she approaches you all. Um, hello. Uh, I, I'm glad you all seem to be safe. Is this Miss Hartgaze or mm -hmm. somebody Ms. else? It's Mayor Hartgaze. Miss Hartgaze. I'm so glad that you are that you are all right. Um, the uh, chief here would like to broker a uh, trade deal and possibly a joining of the blue scales with Zagata. Um. Well, uh, I mean. May I speak to you for a moment, aside from ears? Of course, my lady. She takes you aside. Um, behind her guards, Gorm, you have now rejoined your party. Uh, as the mayor takes you aside, and she's sufficiently, uh, uh, convinced of no eavesdropping. She says to you, My captain tells me that these troglodytes, that they're desiring uh, a trade deal with you, and 
that they seem to know you, but I thought you assured me you dealt with the trogs in the cave. Dealt with in that um, they would no longer steal uh, lemons from you and that they agreed to leave peacefully. Um, they are now returning the favor, as it were, by helping to defend the city as well. But you sort of lied to me. That wasn't what I hired you to do. Well, did you not hire us to get rid of the trogs? They were gotten rid of. The manner of getting rid of was up for debate. That and... It quickly became apparent that they were being used as well. Um, apparently by the same one who used the city. Nevertheless, these creatures have returned and they are simple and dangerous. I don't know if my people will agree to something like this. The very idea of trading with lesser creatures. Of that I understand, my dear. Um, but they do have information that would save the city. Do you remember Lelora? Of course I remember her. I can't spend a day not thinking of her. She plans to attack the city. I'm not sure how the... Uh, a blue scale tribe outside, the troglodytes, seem to know what she plans to do and are willing to offer their assistance in return for trade and being able to live in, like, say, tents and whatnot outside the city. But from what I understand, your only proof of this is what this chief says. How do you know he's not simply lying just to gain access to our town? Call it more of a good faith uh, deal, my dear. Uh, we treated his tribe with kindness and he saw through our deception. His underlings, however, did not. Uh, we tried to get them to step away from the cave for their own safety and to return to their tribe safely without stealing anything else and he is here returning that favor because we saved their life and he understands a good deed deserves reward I just I don't know what I'm going to tell my people if we agree to this I, mean, I don't expect you to know this because you left I, I decided to tell the town of the mayor's murder but after you left and after the hunters were gone so that, you know, the pain would be masked by the festival. But the people are still reeling from it. It's helped that I told them that the murder was solved and that we would find that the, that they had, the person had simply fled. And that as soon as we found them, they would stand trial better that way so that there's not loose threads. But well, now the, now the troglodytes that plagued them a week ago and stole from them, now I'm going to ask them, on top of their mayor being dead, as a new assistant mayor, and less than only being a mayor really for a week and a half, to just accept creatures that we've always assumed and have always had trouble with. They were nothing but mindless thieves. Uh, this is where um, I would lean towards the redemption of the light. But uh, I understand your position. Um, these troglodytes, however, do wish to trade and no longer s and no longer steal. That is something to consider as well. Uh, roll persuasion. Wow, really? It could have been so much worse and it could have been so much better at the same time. One, two, three. And it equals eleven. I just... 
I'll speak with him, but I'm not making any promises. That is all I ask. Uh, at least hear him out uh, and enter negotiations because he would like um, answers quickly. Uh, he would also like the trade deals and whatnot to be in his favor, but uh, of course, that's why deals are. Uh, that's why I said the talk should go into underway as quickly as possible. I don't want the city to come under any any harm or any destruction, and I wish to have us as strong as possible. Of course, but you do understand the position you've put me in. Either deal with the trolls or be slaughtered by something. I know. It is... Think of it more as not dealing with the trogs, but dealing with a potential ally. That way, it will be a little bit more palatable uh, if you deal if you treat them like an ally, because they could bolster uh, the ranks of guards and whatnot in the city. Don't say that in front of Waylon. I won't. Very well, let's get this over with. I'm probably going to lose my career, but maybe we won't be killed by phantoms. Ugh. I'm beginning to hate my job. Well, it's a good thing that she stepped aside with Aerie, otherwise Curiosity would have had major problems with her. Yeah, <laughs> so would Vinda. Yeah, also when, when Gorm got back, he, just, he was just like... Why did you go to the trogs? You know, just asking. Why you didn't wait? And Ari will just kind of look at him and go, Curiosity, my dear Gorm. Curiosity. <laughs> so it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no one's dead, anyways. To answer your, your question, curiosity, after you have this exchange, uh, leader puffs up his chest again. He stabs his his spear into the ground and says, "Yes, leader saw a golden leader was quite tall, handsome, big. So, leader decided he needed to be big to lead." to be like Golden Leader. So Leader went and trained. Then Leader got big and he sort of smiles and he puts his arm up and he, uh, uh, to sort of make a gun pose. And he just kind of smiles, almost like a, like a uh, we can do it poster towards you. <laughs> oh, that is a very effective training regimen. Yes, soon I'll have other truck be big. Uh, but they whine too much. Can't be big. You, know, you see some of the drugs in front just kind of groan and roll their eyes at him. <laughs> at this point, uh, Heart Gaze and um, uh, Ari return. <clears throat> Ari, introduce us. Trying to remember the the name of the trog. Was it chief or leader or chief? Chief is the small is the older one. Leader is the bigger buff one. All right. Ari will uh, walk up to the uh, the chief and will uh, bow uh, nobly, graciously. Uh, my dear chief, uh, this is uh, this is Mayor Hotgaze. Uh, she is the leader, the mayor, the chief, as it were, of uh, Zagata. You, you introduce with name. You chief with name. To which Mayor Hargay says, Well, yes, of course. How else would you know my, distinguish me from other chiefs? And the older chief goes, ah, very brave, very, um, very, um, good to show. So I show. Chief, here, chief, other chief. Chiefs call me, 
older lip. Older lip, you say. Spelling, please. Chief Odlip, it's a pleasure to meet you. My friends here tell me that you are interested in a trade deal with my people. To which Chief Odlip nods and um, speaks out. <coughs> Blue scale track. Like lemons, you call them, yes? Which hard to get sort of just eyes you, Airy. That is correct. Drug call. Yellow squishy. Drug like squishy. Actually. Chief no care for yellow squishy, but makes truck happy, so you know. <clears throat> yes. But must steal yellow squishy if want to have. Chief think this is important taste to friends. So we trade. Trug build. Trugs dig. Trugs protect. What else do trucks do? Leader looks up and he says, Trucks get big! Ah, trucks get big! <laughs> but trucks also come across shiny things. Things that big folk need. To which he pulls out from under his uh, coat a rock that is as he holds it up, it has a gleaming yellow glint to it. Um, 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 in mixed with like, um, uh, what looks like um, marble, marble red rock, um, kind of entwined with it. To which Waylon and those of you who recognize the stone have uh, their eye, your, his eyes go uh, large. Um, give me a culture check. Anyone, anyone can give me this. I assume only if you have. I culture. am staring at this at my boots or something. Or will intelligence work? Intelligence will work. I do have one stun point. <laughs> it has four. <laughs> ah. The dice had been interesting. Bramble, you can just roll an intelligence if you like. Okay. I'm distracted by something else. I know what that something else is, but I'm not saying any uh, saying what it is to anybody. All right, anyone who rolled an eleven or above an eleven, you can tell that this is uncut, unrefined gold, just as though it had been taken from a mine somewhere. Chief holds it up. And as he holds it up higher, it gleams in the sunlight. It sort of seems to shimmer and shine. Uh, Waylon's eyes are immediately drawn, and he looks between it and Mare Heart Gaze. To which Mare says, Um, that... Where did you find that? Trug 
Trug Chief gives it a little bit of a slight smile. Trug dig. Trug know where more this is. We'll trade for your yellow squishy. And he tucks the rock away in his coat. But Trug must be treated like big folk. Not, not like rat or vermin. He, he emphasizes the word and he kind of leans in as he says it. Twitch the mare sort of swallows and stands a little bit taller, pulling her green coat down. But she nods, listening. So, Trug, live outside city. Like tenth folk. Trug no me do be inside. Well, me be little trugs. But chief no trug. Not welcome. Not now. But later. For now, we wander. We go. We do what we want. But come back. We trade with big folk. And big folk trade with us. Big folk not Shoot, not throw, not spit at truck. And you see, Mare, the Mare Heart gaze looks between you, Ari, and she looks to all of the rest of you, sort of seeming to look for input on what she should say next. Curiosity smiles and nods enthusiastically, like this is a great idea. Winter joins him. Spins it too. Could be the beginning of a very new and interesting relationship, Mayor Hot Guys. Uh, I advise to take it. Um, if that shiny rock is of any um, importance to you, then uh, that is definitely something that they could bother with. And if they are bartering, why not treat them respectfully, like you would any business transaction, any business partner? She thinks for a moment, and she looks at Waylon. You can see he's kind of biting his lip. I guess he's thinking about that gold eyeing the pocket that she put it back in. He looks back at the mare. I mean, if that endeavor you're proposing is going to work out, then we're going to need more money. I don't trust these creatures, but it couldn't hurt to at least, you know, maybe hear them out. Maybe see if there's a way to know if they're uh, legitimate or not. To which uh, the mayor then, she looks at Tila, who is still staring at Bramble and like peeling it, like picking up pieces of his leaves and examining them. But then she, when she realized she's being stared at, she puts it back down and and looks straight up at the mare. Oh, yes, I've been listening. Don't worry. Um, I mean, I don't really think that anything bad come of it. These chaps seem like they're decent enough. Uh, you could at least, I, I, I honestly don't have an opinion. I, I don't think that they're very dangerous. Sorry, this isn't... I don't really care. For which my heart case just sort of face palms. <sighs> <sighs> Chief Odalip. You have put me in a difficult position. But you... Your offer seems fair. But I must predicate that it is going to be on a condition... That I trust you. Chief looks up. Kun. Kun. To which she help, con continues. A condition. You say that there is something that the lady has sent to harm us all. Very well. If you stand and face this force and it is proven to be true, I will agree to setting down an establishment for trade between Zagata and the Trogs. 
and you see some of the trogs start, start cheering and, and get excited, but then the chief kind of sensing so, uh, sort of a butt coming, he silences them quickly. Do you see a lot of them sadly put their head back down? But if your claims prove to be false and there's no danger coming to us, you will be banished from us as you will be brandished as untrustful people whom we will destroy upon sight. Is that understood? The This leader kind of picks his head up, squints his eyes a little bit, and leader comes in down and you hear him whisper something fiercely, and the two of them converse for a moment. But then leader sort of smacks, or chief starts to sort of smack the leader on the chest and kind of tells him to go away. Trug, agree. Trug will prove. Big folk will see. Trug, not lie. Trug is truthful. To which the mayor sort of breathes a sigh of relief and she says, Very well. Now with that out of the way, why don't you tell us what this danger is? Ari? I, you, I'm sure you can handle whatever danger might be. Uh, I can at least attempt at it. Uh, if not, I can uh, definitely assess and figure out what we need uh, to acquire so that we can face this danger. Um, if it is big, if it is big as I think it might be, we may be in for a interesting time, shall we say? Very well. Go on, Chief. <clears throat> to which he, the Chief Overlip, comes and he kind of ushers leader to a side for a moment, and then he look, he gestures towards everyone on Lights Arsenal. He gestures towards Heart Gaze and Atila and to um. Uh, and, and to weigh them. And he sort of invites you to step away uh, sort of out of earshot of the other troglodytes. Um, and he starts heading off in that direction. To which Tila, uh, she grins and perkedly walks uh, Bob behind him and she begins to start quizzing him on where he learned to speak and how he knows so many things and where did he hear the, the word lemon and all of these different things. Um, heart gaze converses with Waylon. She eyes the two of you, uh, Curiosity and Airy. And then she nods and she heads off with them as well. Leader stays behind and you can see him. He begins addressing the other trogs and giving some orders. Airy is following the uh, the chief and everybody else. What the rest are you doing? Gorm is just quiet. He does not like this. Well, I guess someone should go tell the farmer that it's safe for him to bring his cart in. I'm assuming he stayed behind, right? Or did he come with us? Because he didn't. Uh, come as you say this, this, as you say this, now looking around, you see that his cart has wound all the way around you guys and is halfway to the city, and he seems to be sort of like tucked behind a rock, peeking out, staring at you all. <laughs> I'll go I wave them. at him enthusiastically and try to give him a thumbs up. He waves back at you and thumbs up back and stays behind the rock. Gorm just starts walking after having said that. Okay. Uh, if there's any conversations you guys want to have real quick, you can go ahead and do so. And but then we're going to skip over to where you guys go talk to him.
we, we can just fill Kylar in what happened. So Tila was the other person who was out there. Oh. And the Trogs were looking for Golden Leader, which was Aerie, and the rest of us. And Vinda flew over there as a bird and overheard that and then came back and told us. And then we eventually decided to go meet the Trogs to see what they wanted to tell us. And basically they had information about Lilor's slash Lady's plans to attack the city or some unknown threat or something. That they wanted to barter in exchange for being able to trade lemons and not be treated like vermin. And you missed the uh, the chief guy's awesome voice. Cool. Also, uh, if you're looking on a roll 20, you notice the big one in the middle. That is leader. Uh, he was the leader of the trogs uh, that were at the cave that we uh, spared. He was the actual leader that uh, we uh, had let go. And he apparently found Magic Steroid slash Training Regimen to become giant and buff because he was inspired by Aerie. Which is hilarious because probably even him at his height, at his maximum height, is probably not even half what Aerie's height is. <laughs> Right, so with that, you guys all find your way back. Uh, you guys find your way uh, over. And to which you, there, you form sort of a little, like, mm, Council of Elrond circle as uh, Chief sort of sits at the top of it in the sand with his legs crossed. He puts his staff across uh, his, his legs. And you see Leader stands uh, as tall as he possibly can, which is to say, like, his head is now is above uh, Tila's waist. Um... He stands tall, makes himself look as big and as buff as possible behind his chief. Chief Odalip invites all of you to sit like he is. Harry will sit. Bramble will sit. Tila immediately sits wherever Bramble is. Curiosity sits down. Yeah, Harmony will sit. Why not? Unless you guys maybe not be part of the group and I'm off dying somewhere. No, you're here. You're here. Yay. No, we, we kept you in the action. We just kind of lumped you and Cur uh, you and Curiosity up into one ball and I made puns. Alright, Gaze cautiously comes, but she sits between the Chief and Aerie. Sort of be in the middle of things. Wayron does, Wayron does not. He goes up, he stands behind Hard Gaze, and he stands the entire time. Winter, what are you doing? Uh, I'm sitting down um, beside um, Curiosity and Harmony. Vinda? Um, is the, the cat still on Curiosity's shoulder? Mm -hmm. I'm going to sit on his other shoulder. <laughs> uh, as soon as you do, uh, You sort of have invaded his privacy. His the shoulders belong to him as far as he's concerned. Um, and Rafi, who was comfortably sitting with his curl tailed over on the other side of the shoulder he was not sitting on, immediately recoils the tail and he looks kind of he looks over you past Curiosity's head. And you hear this curiosity, you hear it loudly in your own ear this sound as you sit and where his tail was. But... Sorry, Vinda. Don't be so rude, Rafi. He kind of gives you a low growl, curls up tighter on your shoulder so that his entire body is on one shoulder and he just stares daggers at Vinda. Vinda, you are welcome on my shoulder if you wish.
Vin Vin is kind of in a staring match, I think. Uh, and kind of sits down with a huff. Still staring <laughs> at Rafi. As long as you stare at Rafi, Rafi stares back at you. Unmoving. Like only a cat <laughs> familiar can. <laughs> Uh, shall we see how long a fairy can? <laughs> I'm gonna have to make you roll throughout the conversation, aren't I? <laughs> you all find your various seats. <laughs> Chief Odalip, he once again clears his throat. <clears throat> Big folk, Trog. Not have lot time, but time enough for story. To which leader just goes, uh No I'm not Young folk no lot story. Young Trog stupid. That's why I chief. <clears throat> Trog not welcome by Big Folk. Big folk? like truck so truck move move and move travel desert truck not disturbed only other creatures and other truck to deal with but one night lady come lady come and she bring small leader small leader not very wise, but very hmm. And he kind of uh, he points uh, to um, Gorm. Like that one. Not seen. But there. Chief don't like small leader. <laughs> but leader but small leader Work for a lady. Lady come. She bring large mount gold. Did and in the to which he pulls out um, a single gold piece, which um, to those of you who are looking, you can see it bears the insignia of the uh, um, Fade Dominion on it. Uh, uh, and and he holds it up and says, "Big folk, use this." Four. Trade. Yes? And he hands it over to you, Ari. That we do. Um, interesting. And Ari will accept it and examine it. Lady, promise. Many, 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 many more for that. All Trog do is dig. Now, what are Trogs good at? He kind of looks at the audience for suggestions. Digging? Yes! That sea leader, that one's smart. Digging! Yes, yes. Lady, know this. So, lady, promise many, 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 many of those for digging. So, Trog dig. Chief, send. Favorite leader. Leader, go. He, dig. With Trogs. Leader, what you tell me? To which the leader. <clears throat> Chef puffed up again, says. <clears throat> we dig for lady. But, lady never happy. So, she sent small leader. Small leader, never happy. Never find what small leader want. Find big stone man. Find big stone wall. But not what small leader wanted. Wait, I have an out of character question. Yes. Uh... So when when he says small leader, does he mean like leader 
but when he was not buff, or does he mean like the imp? Because like, were they calling him boss man before? But... Yeah, you get the feeling that they're probably talking about boss man. It seems that they okay. kind, of, they seem to sort of like the. And as you're talking them, and you're getting, and and you've spent a lot of time with them, it seems that the vocabulary of the older, t the bigger two in charge ones seems to be different from the ones from the like common drugs. Okay. They seem to th like, and as you're talking, they seem to think that they're making it more clear to you, whereas it's not. But in their minds, this is a more clear. <laughs> It's like adding titles they, they, to they people. Want, they want, it's very yeah, clear they, they how many, many, many pieces people. of gold they're going to be getting. <laughs> they, they, seem, they seem to refer to um, the, the titles more than names. Yeah, and you're definitely picking up on that. Like Titles seem to be a kind of a big deal in their, in their tribe. <clears throat> so... Later, not find what lady wants, so later, come back to chief. Chief, ask lady. Lady, no tell. Chief, what lady want, just to dig, and that not found. But lady did say to chief. Many, 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 many more. Of those pieces to truck if truck help spooky army come and get rid of big folk do you know what and every time he says it he looks between you all like he's telling you a secret leans in and whispers Spooky army is. Maybe you can tell us. Leader laughs. <laughs> See, Chief, I told you, their brain's not smart like ours. Ah. Maybe they just not know. No. See, I know, and I smart. No, I told you, that not make you smart. <laughs> the spooky army. Lady promise she sent Oga Luth and their bone giant to take out, to wipe out Big Folk Town. So, Trog say yes. Cause Trog say yes. Cause lady, spooky lady, and Trog don't like Big Folk. Trog. Big Folk mean to Trog. So, Trog, Chief, say yes. But, then, you come. And he, at this point, he looks to you, Aerie, and to you, uh, Winter, and Curiosity, and Vinda, and Gorm, and uh, uh, all the rest of you. You come. You find leader. Peter still not find what lady want. But you know kill leader. You help leader, you tell leader to go. Though big folk never like drug. So chief, and he taps his temple as he says this, chief starts thinking, maybe, maybe not all big folk mean. Maybe not all. All big fog die. So chief think maybe we help big folk. Maybe we ask lady not to kill big folk. 
but lady never come back. Never bring the many, 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 many pieces. So, she figure out, even though leader says, big folk promise lady come back. Chief no better. Lady was spooky. Lady no like big folk, not like us. She no like them. So chief learn. Chief decide come back and find golden leader and his people and help them fight Oga Luth and their bone giant. That is Chief Story. What do you think, Leader? Good story? As good as you told last time, Chief. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, would I know anything about what the Ogre Loof is? I'm kind of guessing I know what the Bone Giant is, or at least I can piece it together. Um, if you are trained in cultural lore or religious lore, you can go ahead and roll and see if you know. Also, Curiosity says, you're a very good storyteller, Chief. Chief nods his head to you within a slight bow. Chief know that why this I a chief. You come chief, you tell good story. Is he the only one? I thought someone else had cultural lore. I have historical lore and research. I do. I have arcane and natural lore. Mm, this is, well, Win winter does. Okay, you can go ahead and roll. Um, and historical lore. I will give you that. That will probably apply. So you can roll that as well. Okay. Um, winter. You are actually familiar with this term. It's a term, it's a word you've heard before when you were a kid. It, it, it was, um, the term Ogoluth was used to describe small demons, less intelligent than imps, um, not as powerful, but um, similar in size. Um, you knew you know this because they were an ogaluth was something you were told as a kid would come and eat you if you disobeyed your parents or did other various things. Um, it was always a just a creature used to frighten children, um, as they're almost like the demon's version of a goblin, but being as it's a demon, it's worse. Oh, uh, when Winter, anytime he mentions the name, she kind of gives this look of fear and confusion because she's always thought of it as more like a fairy tale than anything. <laughs> ha ha ha, Vinda. <laughs> Well then, does anyone have any idea of to what uh, the Ogre Luf is? Uh, Winter looks at Eri. Um, well, when I was younger, um, my parents, well, my mom, and 
the other adults would tell stories of them. Um, they're like a demon, and they eat children at night. Well, at least that's what they told us. I'm not sure if that part's true, but uh, they're not good. <laughs> they're 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 bad. Eri gives each one of the party, uh, Lights Arsenal, a uh, grave look. It's almost concerned. More demons, it appears. Merhart case, who's been silent this whole time, just listening. And then after you speak, she looks to you between you, Eri, and Winter, and the, all the rest of you. Then, if this is true, well, I don't think the Trogs will be enough to just fend them off. I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to have to ask for your help as well. Well, of course we're going to help. Of course, Miss uh, Mayor Hartgays, um I could not stand by and let my people have any, uh, or be hurt by any of this. Well, I certainly hope so, as we will meet. And then as she speaks, she gets cut off by the chief, who jumps up and uh, to his legs, uh, picking the staff up and holding it in his hand and says, you must not talk now. See, Lady told, when moon comes up, then Oga Luth and Bone Monster come back. Bone Giant, lead them in. They come. We must return to drugs and stand and fight. Drugs can handle. Drugs can fight. Drugs no need help. But would like the golden leader for help? Then we prove to big folk, truck strong. Yes? Uh, leader, again, perking up and getting bigger as much as he can. Us. Truck strong, leader stronger. We be strong, we will defeat Ogaluth. So the attack is going to happen tonight. Leader slowly nods his wrinkled head. Yes, yes, young one. That is why Trog come now. Curiosity looks at the sky where, like, evening is up approaching them. Yeah, the sun, Sinesta is basically going down now, and the two moons are beginning to rise. I need, I need arrows. In that case, I do uh, I do suggest we return to the city walls and make uh, make the city fast uh, and defensible now. Uh, may I hot gaze? Uh, when then I suggest you guys get inside the city walls now. Yes, of course. Wayren, I need you to gather up the men and fortify the city as much as we can. We'll bar the gates, giving them enough time to fight off the Ogaluth. Wayren. I also want you to show them the secret entrance in case they need to retreat. To which Raywin gets up and says, Mayor, I'm not letting those creatures know. I didn't tell you to tell the creatures. Inform Arathaeus and Harmony. They will be able to bring them back. And if those creatures require our... I mean, if the troglodytes require our aid and a time to retreat, we will allow this. This is, of course, barring on the fact, on the proof that their story is real. But I won't risk their lives if it is. <sighs> Fine, whatever. Uh, yes, I mean yes, Mayor. I will take care of it. Very well. Tila, will you come with me? I think you may be of assistance in helping 
get the city prepared. To which Tila, who um, has also been mostly silent throughout this, yeah, sh she stands up and uh, looks to all of you. But of course, I would be happy to help Sagata, unless you all are in need of my aid. A.K.A. Harmony, how's your health? I'm good. I'm only missing two heart hit points. I'm fine. Let me look at Chief. Oh, you troglodytes are good at digging. You think there's enough time to maybe dig some pit traps? Trap. Like for an animal? Yeah. If we know where they are and the enemy doesn't trap them in there. I don't know if you don't if you don't think there's enough time, then don't do it. But it was just a thought. Moon's coming soon. And truck not bring shovels, just swords and spears. Okay, never mind. But good thinking, Black Angel. Yeah, you also missed the part where the Charlotteites think that we live in the sky and that our tears is where the rain comes from. Awesome. <laughs> Gord is probably bugging guards about trying to requisition some arrows and bolts. So, Captain, you were going to show me an airy something? Bring a little bit second and on the arrows. Uh, yes, apparently I am. And yes, of course, I will fetch you arrows. <laughs> And bolts. He summons one of his guards. See to it that the um, archers are given everything that they require. And also prepare my def prepare the defenses of Zagata and tell Captain and tell uh, Lieutenant uh, Travis to also uh, await my orders to get the city ready. And the guard Domini soldier salutes him and then quickly runs off. Yes, Harmony, Arceus, come with me. Uh, the rest of you, if you would go and prepare yourselves, uh, I would kindly like not being watched as I'm showing the very secrets that keep our city safe. The eyeballs, uh, hard gaze, who just smiles at him in the kindest manner she can. Come, Vinda, secrets. A fairy too. <laughs> she will eventually, anyways. So, uh, do you see this locket here? She likes to return to. I it. don't care. Okay. <laughs> In that case, lead the way. And he starts walking off towards uh, around the city gate. The rest of you, heart gaze and Tila, lead to back to where the other trogs are, who uh, have seems to be engaged in some sort of soccer, but with lemons. And that's the best way to describe it. Um, okay. Curiosity wants to shake the chief's hand. How do you uh, approach this? I just walk up to him and say, Hello, chief. It is an honor to meet you. May I shake your hand, which is a traditional greeting. You may call me Curiosity, or if you prefer... Healer. Healer. He reaches his hand out and just reaches it out. Like, not in a way to like shake, but like downward with the palm going down. Almost like you would kiss his hand or something. I just grab it and like flip it and shake it. He lets you. He doesn't do it. He doesn't like return it. He just sort of stares at you as you oddly shake his arm up and down. And later also stares his head going up and down with every motion. 
and they both just stare at you like you have worms coming out of your ears. Okay, I stop shaking his hand after I've shaken it sufficiently. And then I say, you're a very wise chief. Yes. Yes. I have been chief for many, 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 many moons that get me wise. Wiser than leader. Leader never wise, like his mother. Which leader just growls. Well, just let me know if any of your people are sick and if they need a healer. Trog no get sick. Trog are strong. Trog are strong. They, they scare sickness away. Wow, that is very impressive. Yes. And he, leader nods and crosses his arms. I don't even think that Harmony can do that. Leader looks back as Harmony leaves with with uh, Ray and and um, Arathaeus. No, he's not as impressive as Gold Leader or Leader. <laughs> All right, so the rest of you go back with the Trogs. Um. Uh, Bramble and Gorm, you're given arrows and bolts. Um, I'll say you are, um, you are, for the two of you, you are given, for arrows, you are given 30 arrows. And for bolts, you are given 20 bolts. You can divide those however you like. Um, the rest, they say that they... Uh, their own men are going to need it in case your lines are broken. Um, Harmony, Arathaeus, and Vinda, you follow uh, Warren to um, a secret entrance. He takes you to the other side of the wall, and um, uh, you see one of the... You can see pictures of it. They're like little pillars that break up the walls, and he shows you one which is specifically marked... Uh, by one of by a, um, one of the nearby st stones um, is a very small uh, marking and you couldn't really tell you wouldn't know it was there unless you knew what you were looking for but you see um, Aetheus which you immediately recognize as a Domini symbol of subterfuge um, and it's a very it's a small it's um, uh, a small symbol of like um, two triangles um Stacked up, uh, stacked up um, on each other, and in the very center is a smaller, tinier triangle. In the very center of all of, of the two of them that put together, um, he points this out to you and says, "So that's how you know where the secret entrance is." And then he, uh, uh, there's a uh, in the in the design work of the pillar, there are. Um, little squares, little rectangular squares, uh, just spaced out between each other. And they alternate between like a light red and a deep red. And he then puts his palm, his hand over two of the squares and he stops on the second dark red square and he pushes that in. And as he does, the pillar, uh, which looks just like just a support pillar, then opens up into a door that leads to a staircase that goes downward. He's like, and here's the secret entrance. It leads to our sewer. It was one of the most pleasant of places, but uh, it'll uh, it comes up from the back of the mansion, the um, mayor's mansion. So it's a uh, Used as a way to either get the mayor out quickly or to get our soldiers back in quickly, you know, whether whichever way we need to go. So the mayor knew about this, not our case, but the previous mayor. 
go, almost certainly. Uh, of course. You have the Good other point. side guarded? I mean, it's in the mayor's office. It leads right. You've seen our vaults, our vault, uh, our uh, documents vaults. At least the floor right below that. Hmm. Covered by a rug. Well, Laura was close to the mayor, so if she found out about this, she might try to send troops underground to get into the city that way. I mean, you're right. I thought about that, but to be honest, he'd have no reason to talk about it unless he had to escape. It's No one's really used this entrance for oh, at least 500 years. Well, probably, well, they might have used it when the cult was kidnapping kids just to bring the kids in quietly, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I haven't. Have, have you checked it for um, troublesome uh, creatures like, uh, oh, I don't know, John is limes? What? The the tunnels and stuff. There's not time for that, Vinda. We'll have to worry about if there's anything lurking in there, but it probably would come up if we saw it. But anyway, um, out of out of character question, how many symbols are on this thing? On this pillar that I have to push buttons on. Uh, so it's it just if you don't know what you're looking for, it looks it just looks like um a like a very um careful line of squares. And there's probably like mm, twenty of them just um lined up. It, it's part of a pattern that's on every single pillar, kind of like um. Uh, like the square pattern of the little archway and the gate in the picture here, but instead of an archway, it's straight across the pillars. Ah. Is the symbol that identifies the pillar like separate by itself, kind of, or is it intermixed yeah. with things? The the symbol that identifies the pillar is off the side of the pillar. Awesome. Just, okay, I can still recognize that then. That's fine. Yeah. It's on the same level as the design. It's on the exact same level, but it's on the wall, not the pillar. Cool. Uh, so, Captain, do you have uh, anyone going up to the fort in case this turns into a siege-type scenario? I have 40 men in the entire town of Zagata. We're going to use most of them to support the gate. If that breaks through. We will run them up to Hightown. And we will bar ourselves and as many citizens as we can inside of the mayor's castle. Beyond that, if these creatures were any sort of intelligent, we could have, you know, called for some guards a couple of days, weeks, maybe, in advance. As it is, we've got what we've got. We'll make do with what we have, uh, Captain. Um, Delight will show, will show his, will show the way. Don't worry. I do hope you're right. I don't. My men and I, we, we handle giant scorpions. That's the biggest threat we have, other than the occasional bandit attack on a caravan. We are not prepared for this. We weren't prepared for the troglodyte problem, and we weren't going to let them know that. Well, at least they don't seem to be a problem right now. For now. So they decide they want to eat our innards or, I don't know, some other strange thing and desire that they have. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> they'll, steal our, uh, they'll steal the lemons and then uh, marinate us in the lemon juice. I don't appreciate sarcasm. Well, I don't appreciate your... that. I do apologize, Captain, but... Uh... In this time, we shouldn't worry and complain. We should see about focusing and see if we can't make sure that people are uplifted and defended. Yeah, I'll leave the uplifting to the priests. Hmm. I'm going to take care of the defending. So Which are my... What? Are the most of them going to be bracing the gate up on top? Archers? What are we talking about here? I'm probably going to put Ten of our best archers up on top. The rest are going to be bracing the gate. I might leave five or so to try and 
keep the same somewhat calm. I'm also gonna have to rely, but I'm gonna, gonna have to rely on the Terra Priesthood. Try and get them to calm people down. Most of them are druids, so maybe they'll be able to do something. Well, good luck. I guess we'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Hopefully after the battle's already done. I'm, ho I'm hoping that you guys are going to take care of it on your own. Yeah, maybe they'll rename the uh, maybe they'll rename the tavern then. That could be quite interesting. <laughs> <sighs> I hope not. We've already renamed it enough, and there's a fountain dedicated to those people. <laughs> yeah. See, now we're going to diversify it anyway. Good luck, Captain. <laughs> Why do we always get these heroes? I'm glad they saved the day, but goodness, it means we have to change everything in the town. I might actually have to go by the days where I can complain about everything. I would be really sad. Anyway, I'm leaving. Right. Don't die. I'll try not to. Same to you, Captain. I hope you live to complain another day. As I'm not sure my wife does. He salutes y'all and then begins to leave for the inside of town. I will say something, but I won't at the same time. I'll be nice. How close is this and secret entrance to the main gate? Mm. Probably like a hundred feet from the main gate. Okay, so it's clearly visible from the main gate area. I mean, it's visible to you now that you know which pillar Yeah, so is. if we saw, like, an enemy going for the thing while we were defending the gate, we'd be able to see it. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically. Awesome. Yeah. But other than that, other than knowing where it is, it looks exactly the same as the rest. So, it's pretty well hidden. Cool. Well, one other thing. So, um... Instead of a bone giant, what if... Uh, what if they come from another direction and rely on the giant to get over or through the wall rather than the gate? Well, then it'll be a situation of we have to get to the bone giant uh, or wherever he's attacking. Well, but then he's got to come through the wall. Couldn't You should probably um, do that bird thing and fly up above the city. That way we'll know which direction they're coming from. And then there is that, Vinda. Okay. Alright, with this, you guys go ahead and make your plans. We're going to take our 10 minute break here. Because then we're going to get into some things. So, um, go ahead, take your break, talk amongst yourselves, get some plan planning strategies ready to go so that when we come back, you can just tell me what you're going to do and then just do it. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> I'm gonna stand nice and safe on the wall and shoot at stuff. And I'll be right back. 